Right, come on in, wake up. Um, it's, it's Friday afternoon. It's been a long week, every week's a long week. Um, you can see what we've got going on on Monday. We're running exams. They'll be fine, they've studied hard, they're in the lab, it's a nice exam, it's, it should be, it's good. They'll show off how much they know. Anywho, so I'm in this room, we've got some students in the other room uh, revising. And this week, whew, gonna do a topic that, to be honest, I thought I'd already done. Or maybe I just blanked out and I'd been trying to put it off because I didn't want to do it. Um, the topic this week is the nerves of the lower limb. So the reason I've been putting it off is I did a, I got loads of lower limb videos. I could have sworn I'd done it because I've got so many lower limb videos. But we talked about the upper limb. I think I did the nerves of the upper limb recently and. That was it's just hard work. Not, it, it's not terribly complicated. It's a little bit complicated, but it's terribly hard to put together. Now, the nerves of the lower limb, I think the, reason, the other reason I've been putting off is that often when I talk about the nerves of the lower limb, I'm talking to anaesthetists and that sort of thing. We go into a little bit funky levels of detail, um, which isn't really the aim of these videos. The aim of these videos is to educate as many people as possible about the important things. So, I know that the... <laughs> I know that these models need oil in, but I ain't going to do it. <laughs> I like the squeak. If I oil it, I'm going to make a mess. I'm going to get oil everywhere, right? Um, I know that these models show a lot of the major nerves. Now, we've, ooh, when we looked at the upper limb, we talked about like the big four. So in the lower limb, we've also got you know, a collection of big nerves. We're going to start at the top. We're going to follow them down. We're going to talk about the muscle groups and the compartments of the thigh and the leg that they innovate. When we get to the foot, it might, there's, there's a little bit more detail down there. But I'm only going to talk about the, the nerves I can see on here. The cutaneous nerves have been taken away because we've, been ta we've taken away the cutaneous, the skin bits, right? Hey, you know what? While we're talking about the lower limb, we can think about running. <laughs> and this might be a good time for me to remind you that I'm going to be running 100 kilometres in one day for charity on the Cotswold Way Challenge um, in the middle of this year. That's June 2018. And if you would like to be the wind at my back, go to the link below, donate to Just Giving. Quid, 50p, 20p, anything would be lovely. Um, or nothing, don't, I don't mind, it's fine. It's fine. Need all the help I can get though. 100k. All right, let's start at the front here. So this, this is the femoral nerve. The femoral region of the lower limb is the thigh. That's what femoral means, of the thigh. Um, and you know that these arteries here, they change their names, right? The artery here and the vein here, they change their name as they pass under the inguinal ligament. We go from external iliac artery to femoral artery. And that's not a thing we do with nerves. Nerves keep their name. They change their name when they split and divide into something else. Or if you get a new branch, we give that a new name, right? So this is the, the femoral nerve. And it starts up, it's, it's from, coming from the lumbar, lumbar plexus. I don't really want to talk about the roots of nerves too much. If you want to look at roots of nerves, go look at a table in a textbook, but I'll do it. Um, they come from the lumbar plexus, they're coming from, you know, the abdomen, uh, and then they pass down, look, this is psoas major here, and iliacus, um, and they, it passes down uh, inferior, or rather it passes deep to the inguinal ligament to get into the, into the anterior compartment of the thigh. And that's key. So the femoral nerve passes into the anterior compartment of the thigh, and it innervates the muscles of the thigh. So, the quadriceps femoris muscle group, it innervates iliacus as it's going past. It innervates sartorius that I just took off here. This is a really handy concept to consider, right? This is a left leg, so I should stick with my left leg. All right, in the thigh, we have three compartments. We have an anterior compartment, a medial compartment, and a posterior compartment. The muscles here are surrounded by fascia, right? We've got this, this stocking of the fascia lata, and then we have the muscles and things supplying the muscles contained largely within a compartment. Things can pass between compartments, but, but think of this anterior compartment, medial compartment, and posterior compartment. Now in the anterior compartment, we have quadriceps femoris and sartorius and what have you, and the, the anterior compartment of the thigh is responsible for extension of the knee and flexion of the hip, um, if you think about rectus femoris and what have you, right? The medial compartment of the thigh is responsible for adduction, bringing the leg back to the midline. And then we have these muscles up here, uh, gluteus medius and minimus are responsible for abduction. 
and then of course the hamstrings and gluteus maximus they do extension of the hip and of course flexion of the knee all right so posterior compartment flexion of the knee extension of the hip got it so remember those compartments as we think about the nerve. So the femoral nerve goes into the anterior compartment of the thigh, innervates that quadriceps muscle group. Now the reason I keep, keep taking sartorius off is that while the, f while, while the femoral nerve is going into the anterior compartment, we can see this nerve running down here. Now deep to sartorius, we have this thing that we call the subsartorial canal. Right, so there's the, like this groove underneath sartorius. And through here, we see this neurovascular bundle running down there. Um, now you know that the femoral artery here, it's gonna run medially, this is the medial knee here. It's gonna run medially, because it's gonna run through that gap in adductor magnus, the adductor hiatus, so that it can get to, you love the squeaking, I know you do. So it can get to the popliteal fossa here, and then becomes the popliteal artery, right? Um, this nerve running with it is actually the saphenous nerve and it's like it's a cutaneous branch It's a sensory a skinny a skin sensory branch of the femoral nerve And what it's doing is it's getting out to the medial knee the medial leg and the medial ankle and It's going to carry sensory innovation back from the skin over there So that's what that is the femoral nerve itself disappears in here. We don't if we take this off We don't really see it. We just see loads of muscle um, All right, so that's the femoral nerve here see this nerve here again running with the blood vessel and that's the obturator nerve now the obturator nerve we can find in the pelvis this pelvis might look a little bit more tilted than maybe you're used to if you're used to looking you know, at a pelvis in the lab kind of because it kind of sits on the table like that right whereas actually in us it, it's tilted like this so so here's the pubis Here's the, uh, here's the sacrum, right? And then what we have here is this is like the, the brim of the bowl of the pelvis. So here's the pelvis, right? So, because this is the, the left side, right? See the, you know, the brim around here? So the obturator, if you find a nerve running around the brim of the pelvis here, it's gonna be the obturator nerve. Reason is, is because that, that's the obturator foramen. And if you look at a completely naked skeleton, there's a big hole there. I've picked this model because it shows ligaments and connective tissue. And uh, there's a membrane covering most of the obturator foramen. Why? Well, because there are a whole bunch of uh, muscles here. All the, now I know we've done, yeah, we've done the, like, the internal and external rotators of the hip, I mean, the deep muscles here. So the, those short rotator muscles of the hip that they attach to this surface, so it gives them a bit more stuff to attach to. But there's a little teeny weeny hole in the superior part of it there, right? And that's where the obturator nerve runs. And that means that it can get to the medial compartment of the thigh. And it's responsible then for innovating the adductor muscles. It innovates all of the adductor muscles in here, except for a little bit of adductor magnus, which is a little bit what we might call hamstringy. It's a little bit on the posterior side. And that gets innovation from the next nerve we're going to talk about. So you see why I'm going to talk about the focusing on the compartments, right? So we've got anterior compartment, we've seen innovated by the femoral nerve. Medial compartment is innovated by the obturator nerve. That just leaves us with the posterior compartment, kind of. So in here we find the hamstrings. And you know the nerve that runs through here, I'm sure you do. If we take off gluteus maximus, we see it. On these models, it's a little weedy thing. Whenever we dissect, we find a huge, great, big sciatic nerve. Uh, here's the piriformis muscle, the pear-shaped muscle. And the, pyrifor uh, the, uh, the sciatic nerve usually pops out from underneath, inferior to the piriformis muscle. Sometimes it splits and two part, one part goes through piriformis and or over the top and underneath. But most of the time, this is what we see. We see piriformis, we see huge, great, big sciatic nerve popping out from underneath it. Now the sciatic nerve, if I take the hamstrings off, runs down the posterior compartment of the thigh. And at some point it splits into two nerves. It splits into uh, the common fibular nerve or common peroneal nerve and into the tibial nerve. And last week we were talking about the, uh, the posterior compartment of the leg and in there we had the tibial nerve. Now where this splits is variable. When we, when we dissect the lower limb we find this 
Sometimes it splits low down, sometimes it splits higher up. Usually it splits higher up than we see in most of the models, it's up here somewhere. But also like the connective tissue is kind of holding the two divisions together. So in fact, you, could, you can often tease it apart and it splits higher. Anyway, what that means is that you might read about all of the muscles of the posterior compartment of the thigh are innervated by the tibial division of the sciatic nerve. Just because it's, you know, it's very sciatic up here and it's split down here and it's sending off branches to these muscles as it goes down, right? Um, the biceps femoris muscle is called biceps because it has two heads, by two seps, kaput two heads. So the short head of biceps, down, which is right down here, right? Um, the short head of biceps femoris gets some innovation from the common fibular nerve. But see, I, this, this was supposed to be easy and I'm getting into too much detail. Also, you've got to watch out because sometimes my tongue runs away from my brain. And whilst most of this information is fairly safe in my brain, getting it out doesn't always go to plan. The sciatic nerve and its two divisions innervate the muscles of the posterior compartment of the thigh. Good, but also up here we've got these guys. The gluteal muscles are not innervated by the sciatic nerve. They're innervated by branches of the sacral plexus. So the sacral plexus is what we see in here inside the pelvis. And um, we've got gluteus maximus here, and then here we've got a pair of muscles, gluteus medius and minimus, kind of over the top of each other. Um, and they have their own gluteal nerves. So we have a superior and inferior gluteal nerves. Can you see that gluteus medius and minimus are more superior than gluteus maximus? So gluteus maximus is innervated by the inferior gluteal nerve, and gluteus medius and minimus are innervated by the superior gluteal nerve. Both those nerves also pop out from around piriformis up here, and they just, they just get there, right? It's pretty cool. These nerves are really important. If these nerves get damaged, then um, you can't do abduction. Now, the reason abduction is important of the, of the hip is that when you walk, you might not often walk backwards, but there you go. Uh, when you walk, with every step, you take one foot off the ground. So what this means is that while the muscles here, when they contract, so gluteus medius and minimus will abduct the, the femur at the hip, um, what they'll also do is they have to contract when you take one foot off the floor to keep the pelvis level. If the muscles relax, then my hip drops. So to keep, can you see, so to keep my, so to keep my pelvis level, when I take one foot off the ground, these contract, which means that if the nerve to this, these muscles, gluteus medius and minimus is injured, or if the nerves themselves, are, the muscles themselves are weak, then the hip on the other side is gonna drop. So what this means is that instead of bringing your foot through normally, the, the foot tends to, tends to drag and you have this dragging gait. So if that's the nerves of the thigh, we now need to go beyond the knee into the leg and then the ankle and the foot. So then we've got the tibial nerve, which is going to continue into the, the posterior leg. It's going to innervate all of the muscles of the, of the posterior leg. And the tibial nerve then continues down and then it's going to pass, look, there's the big toe. So this is medial. So it's going to pass deep to the retinaculum around here. Um, and it splits, that's where the tibial nerve ends, and it splits into medial and lateral plantar nerves. So it's going underneath the foot, which, and those nerves aren't pleasant, present on this model. Uh, there we go. So there's the tibial nerve coming around here, and then it splits, so there's the big toe, so this is medial, so this is the medial plantar nerve, that's lateral, so there's the lateral plantar nerve. So it's innovating all of the stuff stuff on the plantar surface of the foot. Um, so we've got lots of little muscles down here, lots of intrinsic muscles of the foot, and you've also got the skin, right? So that's all tibial nerve. Now, if we go back up to the knee, so here's the common fibular division of the sciatic nerve, and look, this is going out laterally here, uh, and it's going over this bulge, and you can palpate this bulge, you can, so you can find your own common fibular nerve, right? Ooh, shall I get my leg up? Here! Um, actually, pull me. Right, so 
that there, that's the head of my fibula bone, right? So the common fibula nerve, or common peroneal nerve if you prefer. The reason I don't like peroneal nerve, P-E-R-O-N-E-A-L nerve, is because if you spell it wrong and you write peroneal nerve, that's completely different, isn't it? I think fibula nerve's easier. And of course we're talking about the fibula bone. Anyway, the common fibula nerve runs over the head of the fibula and goes out there. So you can palpate that yourself. Oh, if you get it in the wrong place, you oh. So if I use this guy, that tibia, fibula, head of the fibula, common fibula nerve runs over this. Yeah. And the reason, of course, it's called the common fibula nerve is because it's going to split into uncommon bits. It's going to d divide into deep and superficial fibula nerves. Now, the superficial fibula nerve will stay lateral. So it's going to go um, into the lateral compartment of the calf. So we have this posterior compartment. We have a lateral compartment with fibularis brevis and fibularis longus muscles in it. And we have an anterior compartment, which is where we find tibialis anterior and all that stuff. So just like the thigh, we've got three compartments. So the superficial fibular nerve runs into the lateral compartment of the leg and innervates um, fibularis brevis and fibularis longus. Um, the deep fibular nerve um, runs deep um, and that gets to the anterior compartment of the leg um, and innervates these muscles around here. Now we can also see these nerves here. Confusingly, um, these nerves that pop... If, actually, if I take this off, can we see... All oh, right, right, so this, this muscle here is extensor digitorum longus. Look, the tendons are going to the digits, to the toes, um, and it's going to extend them. And if we take that muscle off there, uh, there we can see inside the anterior compartment of the leg and that's the deep fibular nerve there. Now see how it stays deep, which means that if I put this muscle back on again, these two nerves that we can see here are in fact branches of the superficial fibular nerve. This is how the superficial fibular nerve ends. It gives off a couple of branches here. So you see how they're running to the dorsum of the foot. This is the dorsal surface, right? The top of the foot. Um, and one nerve is running medially and one nerve is running laterally. Then this is the, the medial dorsal cutaneous nerve of the foot. Medial, dorsal, dorsum cutaneous skin nerve of the foot and this is the lateral dorsal cutaneous nerve of the foot and you can see that uh, this one's going to run down to the digits and essentially they're carrying sensory innovation from the dorsum and the digits of the foot. Now the thing that's a bit funky here and rather cool, or maybe not, the thing that's a little bit weird is that this deep fibula nerve actually stays deep to all of this stuff and that's what we can see popping out here. So you see between the great toe and the second toe, look, there's another nerve there. But it's not, it's not a branch from these guys. That's actually popping out from underneath these muscles. So this is a, this is like the, the, the last part, the, the terminal bit of the deep fibula nerve. And this is just carrying sensory innovation from the skin between these two toes. Does that make sense? Can you imagine that? So the skin up here is carried, the sensory innovation from the skin up here is carried by the, um, uh, the superficial fibular nerve, and then the innovation from the skin in between these two toes is carried by the, 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 the deep fibular nerve. Weird, I know, but there it is. But that's it, all right? So we talked about the sural nerve last week in the posterior, um, leg, but other than talking about all the cutaneous nerves, which I don't think we really want to do at this stage, that's it. So when you're thinking about the, um, the nerves of the lower limb, think about the compartments. Still loving that squeak? Um, posterior compartment of the leg, lateral compartment of the leg, anterior compartment of the leg, the nerves that run through each tibial nerve, superficial fibula, deep fibula. Um, and likewise in the thigh, think of the posterior compartment, medial compartment, and anterior compartment. Lost me hamstrings. 
of the thigh. You all remember that the sciatic nerve runs posteriorly in the posterior compartment and splits into tibial and common fibular divisions. Remember the gluteal muscles have got their own nerves and the femoral nerve innervates the anterior compartment, obturator nerve innervates the medial compartment. See that's why I thought I talked about it before because I'm always talking about these nerves, I'm always talking about the nerves of the lower limb, but hopefully it's straightforward. It's gone dark outside, can you hear the pitter patter of the rain? I'm going to get wet cycling home. But hey, that's living in South Wales, you get wet, but we've got the sea, so. Okay, um, right, see you guys next week.